And how does his religious views come into play with his political views? Well, I think it's, it's uh, I mean, Milton's known uh, as a strongly anti-Catholic writer, and that's true, although also not unusual in, in, in 17th century England. And a lot of the religious dispute um, that I've mentioned earlier, um, the growing divide in England between those who felt that Charles um, and the church uh, under Archbishop Laud were going in a more Catholic direction and moving away from the Protestant Reformation. Uh, and Milton was certainly one of those who um, considered uh, Laudian reforms under Archbishop Laud uh, as being closer to bringing the, the English church closer to Catholicism. And that was, that was key to the conflict that broke out. But Milton himself, I mean, it's hard to sort of, uh, before the 1640s, certainly, he doesn't really tell us his, his religious views because he doesn't write in prose for the most part. He has a series of letters to friends and so on, but he's more interested in those letters in poetry um, and in, in learning languages and in, in reading history. And nearly all his writing before 1642 is in the form of poetry. Uh, and, and also, all, almost by its nature, poetry is, is bound by genre, by tradition, uh, rather than by kind of direct political you know, argument. And so really it's a matter of reconstructing, uh, as I try to do in the book, the development of his religious and political views. Um, you know, there's nothing to suggest in his, say, teenage years that he's a particularly vociferous Puritan um, who, you know, any, there's nothing to suggest he's more puritanical than other people, particularly in the period. Um, and it's really only, I, I suggest, as you get into the 1630s and the situation deteriorates uh, and the threat to the Protestant church, the perceived threat to the Protestant church becomes more serious, that he develops um, what you might call a polemical position on all of this. Um, earlier, you know, in his poetry, so his poetry on the gunpowder plot, for instance, he does present the Pope as a kind of demonic figure uh, and as, you know, trying to, to blow up the English monarch, uh, but that's fairly standard stuff. Uh, there's nothing unusual uh, about that. And it doesn't in itself suggest any great, any great uh, kind of radicalism at that time. Um, so I think the story I try to tell is one of very much of dynamism in Milton's mind. He's always developing ideas. And indeed, you know, as we, we might go on to discuss, and certainly as I go on to discuss in the second volume, which I'm working on at the moment, uh, he actually developed some quite heretical ideas, um, which don't fit in with either Puritanism uh, or Laudianism or any of the standard conventional uh, denominations uh, of the period. And indeed, you know, he has ideas about the Trinity, uh, about um, the, the relationship between the body and the spirit, which are really, which as they develop during the 1630s and into the 1640s and beyond, are really quite unusual and heterodox. 